so hello and welcome back guys so as in today's video i will teach you about handling time in node.js well you can do it manually but i am going to use this package called npm well sorry it is called ms prettify well you can use the simple ms12 but i made it and i wanted to showcase it so i'm gonna teach it so let's begin real quick so first of all open your visual studio code let me show you mine bam so you simply have to do a small thing you have to Click your click on your terminal and then you can just do npm i ms dash prettify. So guys, we installed the thing. Now we have to do a simple thing. We can do cons ms. Well, you can name it anything. I'm gonna name it ms because it's my habit now. Then we can just do require and then do ms. Sorry, ms prettify. Bam. So now let's let me tell you what I mean by it, handling time. Well, for example, you can have a scenario like you take a user input and let the input be well for example you have to take input for um, probably you have a timer well you, you have a command with which user will provide you some time like 2 days 39 minutes uh, and 10 seconds then how will you uh, remind the user after this much time all right for that you have to convert all of this time to millisecond and here comes ms.prettify you can literally do let time is equals to ms and then run this function wait wait let me check we have to do dot default app for sure then we have to run this function and we have to provide the time and it is this input and now let me log the time and you will see something really cool probably so now let me run the thing and bam you can see it gave me some time in milliseconds so in programming we have to save time in milliseconds so that we can do stuff afterwards for example like we got this input from the user and then we just have to do something like set timeout and then we have some function and then we have this much time well we can just do time here pretty simple and of course you can save the stuff to your database so that you can do that thingy afterwards i mean like let me just show you an example you can do something like once data is equals to uh created at it will be time like this is to know when this thing was started and now you can do end at two you can just do date dot now plus the time uh wait a second plus the time and you can do something like let me think range or maybe time limit it will be equal to this time and you can do another thing ended it will be false so now you can just save this into your, to your database and on restarts on restarts of your application you can loop through each and every data and check if it is ended or not and if it is ended already then ignore it and if it is not ended then check whether the time is exceeded or not for example if we do if data dot end at is greater than uh, sorry is uh, let me do this for making it a bit easy so we are checking if the current time is more than the time it is supposed to be ending the thing is supposed to be ending then do the thing we just have to do whatever thing we are supposed to well here we are supposed to uh, make a reminder like we will need to message the user that your reminder or timer is ended otherwise you can just use the set timeout function and do the thing you will pass this to the thing function and the remaining time and how will you get the remaining time it is pretty simple you will just do date dot now uh, and by the way data dot end at subtract by date dot now this will tell us the remaining time and bam, it is pretty simple math i just told you guys so that you can understand it a bit more now let me move on to this time thing once more i mean the package so this is a simple way to get the time but what if you want to do something opposite for example user for example we have to make it readable to the user let me show you what i'm talking about well what if you have some time and the time is in milliseconds but a normal human cannot understand this well at least i cannot for that you can just do t and i will uh, let's just name it t dash it will be equal to ms and we just have to run the function and we have to provide the damn time uh, 
uh, well no we have to provide t because t is the millisecond time and then we can just log the t dash thing and you will see something nice and you can see it gave us this much time 1 hour 27 minutes 26 seconds 789 milliseconds but what if you don't like this millisecond part you can probably prevent it let me show you how you can just add a comma it is for providing options and here here comes this wait a second uh, bam so now you have four options well ignore each and every option just go on the till thing and just uh, add minute no just add minute so this means we want time till this unit till the second unit well second unit refers to this one so if we log it now you can see it didn't give us the millisecond and if you for example if you make it day then it should return nothing all right then it returned everything it is a bug i just found out but let's ignore that so if we provide r then it will just give us till the r thing and it will ignore each and every remaining part so that's how the tail thing works and now let's move on to something different uh, let's make another variable and name it t2 all right bam so what if you want something x well for example right now you can see the units are written and in the whole world of the unit is written for example r minutes seconds and milliseconds what if you want to make them small or like the short forms and here comes this thing you can just pass expand well let me make it a bit more readable bam so we are providing the time and then we are providing an object which will have expanded is equals to false and bam everything is in short forms now pretty simple probably and now let's do something else there is this max thing now you might wonder what is this what is max well it is quite a handy thing well if i pass max to 3 then you will see something cool bam you can see it only returned us 3 units and if i add some numbers here then you know what will happen it will just return the first 3 units and if we make it small then it will still return the well it is it didn't return us three units because there aren't three so that is it all right guys so after max there comes other thing the return object thing well trust me this is probably going to be really cool well i like it it is sort of an cool thing if you set it to true instead of time in a string or in number you will get an object this object contains the r the minute the second and the milliseconds so if you want your time to be in an object you can just pass this value and let me check another thing if we pass max here i guess yep it didn't it just gave us the first two values and of course we can pass the till thing for this thing too we can pass till minute and we'll give the same thing so this is all about this package it can be really handy for you like you if you want to convert a string to number i mean the string time to number and number time to string and if you want to get its object form and lot more stuff like that well let me check another thing what if i provide a stringified value what will happen now it gave us all right so there is a thing if you are going to provide time in a string then you will always get the millisecond time all right so you the objects doesn't really matters if you are providing a string this object is just for uh, modifying the result for your millisecond time for example if, if i provide some time in millisecond then this stuff will work so if we will provide just time in string then we are going to get the time normally this is it and thanks a lot for watching if you want to know anything more about this package feel free to contact me i will tell you about it as much as possible and sooner or later i will add, add some updates to this thing you can just tell me if you want any more any new updates and i guess bye